And that is how a simple basketball game led to the comedian Louis J. Gomez shoving a gun up Big J. Okerson's asshole. You know, why do you insist on telling me these stories? Because <laughs> it just happened. It's been on my mind all day. <laughs> it was a toy gun. It's fine. Yeah, maybe a squirt gun, but that just makes his asshole. What? What the fuck, dude? It was an air. It, it was an airsoft gun, but whatever. I thought it was. You said it was a squirt gun, you <laughs> fucking bitch. I never, said, I never said it was a squirt gun. I said it was a toy gun. You said the gun airsoft made him wet. No, I didn't say anything about it making him wet. You lying sack of shit. Now that we're live, you're lying and you, you piece of shit. When did I <laughs> hold? No, when did I say it made him wet? Never said such a thing. Bullshit. When did I say that? You said it uh, about a minute before we went live. You said the gun made him wet. Well, you had a bit of diarrhea, so I guess technically <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh my hey everybody, God. welcome to the Lesser Saints of Discord, your one and only pre-show to the Late Night Saints. Every Friday, 4.30pm Pacific Standard Time, 7.30pm Eastern Standard that Time. That got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, that basketball game got out of hand. That's a true story. It just happened. <laughs> oh man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway, anyways, <laughs> Discord news. Um. Yeah. yeah, I got nothing in terms of Discord news. I guess some people are saying that they're. God damn it! I one moment. Apparently, some people are saying there's some issue with the uh, music bot, but. Uh, I'll I'll have to look into that. That's about the only new uh, stuff we have in terms of news. Yeah. Well, um, for the server. I'm trying to think if I have any news for the server. Nothing important. All right. Uh, we're joined today by Skull Maggots joining us today. Hello, hello. Addy had to dip out for just a minute, but Addy will be back. Don't worry. Addy Hopefully. needs still some waiting personal on my food. time. Dude, yeah. I have not been eating well recently because of this move. Oh, yeah. Of course not. Like, I've been I having lunch. I hope you're enjoying the new place, though. Oh, God, this is nice. The uh, the room that my computer's set up in is kind of echoey, but that's about the worst of it. I don't hear an echo. Yeah, that's because I'm on a different mic. <laughs> yeah, he's using that headset, which does a lot of noise cancellation. Yeah. Because it's gaming. Yeah, I'm eventually going to have to get... Oh, pardon me. Gonna have going to have to get some proper sound dampening in here and echo proof this room a bit a bit just, um, we'll just get some pvc pipe make a frame um drape some thick blankets over that and i just use boxes computer. i've got blankets uh hanging on the door the bat uh the uh the the closet door um i've got a random blanket hanging off a nail yeah. Uh, Beardy did a whole tutorial on budget sound, uh, sound dampening. Ugh. Anyways, hey, I'm moving on. The moving space on. is nice. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about space a little bit. <laughs> All right. Spacesuit gloves contaminated during Friday's historic spacewalk. It's probably just space grease. <laughs> Somebody was schlicking right before and, uh... Skeet, skeet, skeet. You know. Yeah, they probably ate a sloppy joe. 
The spacesuit gloves of a NASA astronaut were contaminated during the historic all-woman spacewalk on Friday, October 18th. But it's probably just matters. space grease. Yeah. This past Friday, NASA astronaut Christine Koch and Jessica Meir embarked on a spacewalk to uh, replace one of the International Space Station's battery charge discharge units after it failed following a previous walk on October 11th. The spacewalk was successful as the unit was replaced, with the astronauts also completing some get-ahead or extra tasks. However, when the astronauts re-entered the station, there was a contaminant on one of Coke's gloves. It was oh. Coke. Yeah, I blame Coke. <laughs> how how funny? Well, not not like funny in the regular sense. How how odd would it be if the first woman spacewalk they get some sort of space disease? Oh, oh boy, an SD. Uh, no, no, an SVD. <laughs> SVD. Rock and RD. Spatial venereal disease. I wasn't going to go that far, but okay. <laughs> uh. But it's most likely that this contaminant is just grease from the station's Can Canand Canada Canadarm 2 robotic arm, Coke said during a post spacewalk webcam Tuesday or today, October 21st. So this was earlier this uh, week. Wow. Yes, it was the space yeah. arm. To transport the bulky replacement BCDU in space, Coke had the unique task of riding on the robotic arm. Coke referred to riding on the arm as an incredible privilege. It's something we do train for, but since it's rare, not many people actually get the experience of doing that. She said you during think the Coke's webcast. Being what? What? She rode the she, arm. She, yeah. She, Do you think she I had a fisted? similar thought. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was thinking more of the vibrations, but uh, whatever. <laughs> part of what that involves. Never mind. <laughs> part of what that involves is actually install uh, installing a foot restraint on the end of the arm. <laughs> The end that's actually normally just meant to grapple to, say, a visiting cargo vessel. <laughs> I gotta attach foot restraints, baby. Mm. Ooh, foot. Mm. I don't want to move. God, the sex swing has been fun, but I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've had too much freedom in my movement. I want to switch things up and go the other way now. <laughs> And so, she continued, of course, a mechanical component like that has grease and lubrication. And what the engineers think at this point is that my hand just brushed up against some of that when I was installing that foot restraint. You better have lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy. This went yeah. so far south. Holy fuck. Uh, <laughs> Go to that arm. <laughs> So while a contaminated spacesuit glove may seem mysterious or dangerous, it looks like the glove just has some grease on it from uh, Canada Arm 2. Coke said during the webcast that the gloves are now being analyzed inside the space station and the contaminated glove is just a little sta uh, just a little it stained. What? It's worse now. <laughs> they made it worse. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish I could stay just as clean as when I'm <laughs> in my spacesuit <laughs> as I attempt to uh, do when I'm eating in the gallery and our food floats around, Coke uh, joked, re-emphasizing that the glove contamination is really no big deal. It shouldn't be any kind of big deal to take from here, uh, she said. To take from where? I don't know. Her take two. I have an idea, but I don't know. Welcome, sir. Hi, also, Eddie. welcome back, yes. Maddie. Yes, fuck. Hello, yes. Welcome, Maddie. That's the joke we're making, sir. 
Yep. How astute of you. She <laughs> fucked the space arm. No, the space Allegedly. arm. No, the space arm got on her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, wait. She, she... she wrote it. You know what? It's on her glove. So that would be a handy. <laughs> ah, I said I she wrote it. it too. So I mean, ah, uh, that's true. Mm. She had to hang on <laughs> somehow. Like I want to see this arm, but I don't think they have it. Well, maybe it's in the video. Yeah, no, because that's just a webcam. Yeah, that's just her explaining it. Are they still in space to this time? Yeah. Yeah, they're still in space. Yeah, this was only four days ago. No, oh, they're, they're going to be probably a symbiote. Fuck you, sir. I want one of their chicken quesadillas now. Oh, guess what? That's what I'm having for dinner. Taco oh, Bell man. chicken quesadilla. Yep. And tacos. I want a car trap supreme now. Are you having that delivered? Yes. Still waiting for it. Who are you? Are you going through like Uber Eats or something like that? Like no, the, I'm or is it directly from? Does does Taco Bell deliver where you you're from? It delivers. Like it's um, it, you get free Taco Bell. I mean, you get Taco Bell delivered to you free by Taco Bell. No, I think it's um, whatever the Fred Go thing. Can't look at this up. Uh, yeah. Is it DoorDash? Uber Eats? Kind of irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Riveting conversation. I, I, I find DoorDash generally carries Taco Bell. Just so I know. can see the Maybe. viewers drop. Yes, yeah, DoorDash. Oh, no. Yeah, see. All right. <laughs> Addy, you want to say anything now that you're back? Uh, 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 fart. And Did also, um, also, uh, boob. Uh, um, okay. and while I have the mic, um, uh, butts. All right, quick, take the mic away before she says anything else. No. no I think no, that's, no. I think that's. Because Addy actually, actually, Addy actually had something that they wanted to talk about today. So. Oh, do we want to get in that already? That's fine by me. I don't care. I, if you want to wait till later, that's fine I don't, too. I don't. I don't care. I'm just checking. I'm yeah. just checking. Yeah. Let's get um, through the space stuff first. How about that? Yeah, okay. go for it. All right. Let's, let's talk it. about the Yeti. Yeah, the cosmic Yeti. Behold this cosmic Yeti, a monster galaxy from the beginning of time. Oh, Astronomers yeah. recently spotted a 12.5 billion year old light from the giant galaxy, which helps explain the evolution of the early universe. Spotting the universe's earliest structures is a challenge for astronomers. Evidence of these massive galaxies is hard to find, but they do leave behind some tracks if researchers look hard enough. Now, the chance discovery of faint light captured by the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, ALMA, in Chile, has revealed the existence of one such cosmic yeti, according to a press release. Why do they call it a cosmic yeti? That's what I'm curious about. University of Arizona astronomer Christina Williams produced a shimmering splash of light and observations from the Alma radio telescope in an area where nothing had been seen before. It was very mysterious because the light seemed not to be linked to any known galaxy at all, Williams says in a statement. When I saw this galaxy was invisible at any other wavelength, I got really excited because it meant that it was probably really far away and hidden by clouds of dust. There's mm -hmm. clouds in space? Yep. Yeah, there's all sorts of shit flying around out there. How can we haven't found aliens yet, then? Because there's clouds of dust covering them because up. Because we, we didn't successfully raid Area 51. Yeah. To clap them cheeks. We'll get to that later. <laughs> what, clapping cheeks or aliens? Yes. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think we do get into some clapping of cheeks later. Oh, uh, boy! <laughs> uh, the team estimates that the light from the galaxy took 12.5 billion years to reach Earth. 
meaning that it is an extremely rare glimpse of a galaxy that formed less than 2 billion years after the Big Bang. The light detected, however, isn't from the galaxy itself. Researchers su suspect that ancient galaxy has 100 billion stars, which is about the same as the Milky Way. For reference, go to the desert, look up. Um, it's also possible that it forms new stars at a rate 100 times faster than our corner of the universe. Clouds of dust conceal all that starlight, but Alamo was able to detect the faint glow from dust particles. The team's findings are documented in the Astrophysical Journal. This monster galaxy. The Yeti is not a monster. Just living his life out in the woods. Fuck you. <laughs> Just because he has an alternative lifestyle does not mean you can insult him. Yeah. Well, yetis live in the mountains and in the snow. Not in the woods. Not 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 necessarily. That's only half the year. The other half it absolutely is woods. Yeah, yeti yeti is just another word for Sasquatch. Uh, it's coined generally for like the Himalayas and everything, but they they're also called yetis here in Washington where there's a lot of woods in the mountain. Hmm. The more you know. A lot of people associate Yeti with the more uh, snowy and, uh, and cold climates, but it's not exclusive. Yeah. I, I do have a question. What's okay. the um, process on the black hole? The black hole's turning the frog gay. Yep. I honestly <laughs> don't know what you're asking, Skull. The black yeah, hole that what? happened, like, it was the big thing, and now this is going to be the big thing. Oh, they they saw it. That was the that was the big thing. It's not going to suck us up. Oh, it's already sucking us up. Great. Yeah, no, nah, it's way it's it's sucking all sorts of shit. We're actually already past the event horizon. It's a slow slow death. Yeah. But I want a quick death. I don't think uh, Dra there. Dragon Axe, that's only the blue yetis that are hunted for their microphones. Um, yeah. And, man, YouTubers are really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's just talk about Bigfoot. That's a fun subject <laughs> for me. <That's laughs> Has Bigfoot right, but... been spotted recently? Bigfoot is always <laughs> spotted. Yeah, except it's their when fur he's pattern. solid. Yeah, <laughs> you could be a, just Harry Larry. Don't confuse <sighs> Harry Larry with Sasquatch. Harry Larry is just covered in body hair. Sasquatch is also it's covered, covered in, in body hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but different. It's different. I don't have to. I, I I don't have to look at a bald spot on Sasquatch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the light detected, however, isn't from the galaxy itself. <laughs> okay, never mind. I already read that. The monster galaxy, however, is more than just a cool find. It also helps to answer some big questions in cosmology. Most of the large galaxies astronomers have observed from the early universe reached maturity very quickly when the universe was just about 10% of its current age of about 13.8 billion years old, give or take a billion. Obviously, that's what the about. Okay. For that to happen, those mature galaxies had to come from much larger monster precursor galaxies, something researchers have never observed. Oh, so thank monster God. Monster galaxy... And other recent observations may finally solve the mystery. Food's here. Be right back. Cool. Mm. Our hidden monster galaxy has precisely the right ingredients to be that missing link because they are probably a lot more common, says Williams in a statement. Team found theirs by looking at an incredibly tiny slice of sky about one hundredth of the width of the full moon. Study co-author Kate Whitaker. That thing's huge if that's this. Okay. Study <laughs> co-author Kate Whitaker, an astronomer at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, thinks there could be a lot more galaxies like it out there. These otherwise hidden galaxies are truly intriguing. 
It makes you wonder if this is just the tip of the iceberg with a whole new type of galaxy population just waiting to be discovered, she says in another press release. In fact, other massive star-forming galaxies were spotted earlier this year. In August, another team using the ALMA telescope reported in the journal Nature that they had located 39 galaxies that formed before the universe was 2 billion years old. Those seem to be embedded in a dark matter halo, making them difficult to observe directly. I think we covered that. I don't remember. Both teams are waiting, awaiting the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, currently scheduled to lift off in 2021. That scope should be powerful enough to penetrate the dust and answer questions swirling around these galaxies. GWSD will be able to look through the dust veil and can learn how big these galaxies really are and how fast they are growing to better understand why models fail in explaining them. William said. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 God damn. <laughs> Fun shit. Finding new shit in space. It's a great time. <laughs> oh, God. Pardon. Sorry. Dear Lord. Yeah. Let's talk about clapping them cheeks. Yeah. My NASA's piece? planet hunting probe joins the search for new intelligent aliens, or for intelligent aliens. Scientists with TESS mission will work w uh, with the Breakthrough Listen project. NASA's newest planet hunter is joining the hunt for intelligent aliens. Scientists working on the space agency's transitioning exoplanet survey satellite, TESS, mission will collaborate with 100 million dollar breakthrough listen project in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI. members of both teams announced today october 23rd so this was only two days ago it's exciting that the world's most powerful SETI search with our partner facilitates across the globe our partner facilities across the globe will be collaborating with the test team and our most capable planet hunting machine, Pete Warden, uh, Warden, exclusive director, executive director of Breakthrough Initiatives, a program that includes the Breakthrough Listen Project, said in a statement. We're looking forward to the working together to working. God damn, I'm tired today. We're looking forward to working together as we try to answer one of the most profound questions about our place in the universe. Are we alone? Warden added. Tess launched to Rimshi, Earth. Rimshi, by the way, why are you always surprised when I have up-to-date articles? You know I look for them on Thursday. Oh, no, no. I'm <laughs> making a comment that this happened two days ago. Uh, okay. You just seem a little surprised by it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I know when you look for these. Yeah. Tess launched to Earth orbit in April 2018 on a mission to hunt for alien planets circling bright, relatively nearby stars. The spacecraft does this work via the transit method, which looks for slight dips in star brightness caused when an orbiting planet crosses the star's face from Tess's perspective. This strategy was used to great effect by Tess's predecessor, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope which discovered about 70% of the 4,000 or so known alien worlds. <coughs> but TESS will likely be even more prolific, finding perhaps 10,000 or more new exoplanets over the course of its two-year primary mission. Team members have said, To date, TESS has spotted more than 1,000 objects of interest, 29 of which are confirmed alien planets. Wow. Because TESS is focusing on stars in the sun's cosmic neighborhood, most of the mission's finds will be suitable for follow-up studies by other instruments, for example. Uh, for example, NASA's powerful James Webb Space Telescope, about 8.8 .8 billion observatory... Uh, an 8.8 .8 billion observatory scheduled to launch in 2021 should be able to probe the atmospheres of multiple test-discovered planets 
for biosignature gases, agency officials have said. Breakthrough Listen pro uh, plans to do scans of its own, but the organization will be looking for techno signatures coming from Tess's worlds. Techno signatures are indicators of advanced alien civilization, and they come in many possible forms, including leakage from TV and radio broadcasts, which could, theoretically, betray humanity's presence to intelligent aliens. That's if they're still looking for that shit. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Breakthrough Listen plans... Um, by the way, by the way, real quick, thanks for the follow on the host. Sir. Hey. We'll have notifications for stuff like that up mm -hmm. at some point. <laughs> thanks, sir. Okay. Breakthrough Listen will now <laughs> add test objects of interest to its target list. Scanning promising worlds... With a range of instruments, including the Green Bank and Parks Radio Telescope in West Virginia and Australia, respectively. The, <laughs> the Meerkat Radio Array in South Africa and the Automated Planet Finder Optical Telescope in California. Why do they get the nicer name? The two teams will also work together to help refine breakthrough listen uh, li breakthrough listens data analysis strategy. <coughs> we what? Nothing. We are very enthusiastic about joining the Breakthrough Listen SETI search. Test Deputy Science Director Sarah Seeger, uh, a planetary scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, said in the same statement. Out of all the exoplanet endeavors, only SETI holds the promise for identifying signs of intelligent life. Researchers will also look for anomalies in the stellar light curves. Tess collects. Such oddities could potentially be caused by orbiting megastructures built by advanced civilizations. A, hypothesi a p hypothesis that's gotten unerring recently thanks to analysis of Kepler observations. The discovery by Ke uh, the Kepler spacecraft of Boyajin's star, an object with wild and apparently random variations in its light curve, sparked great excitement and a range of possible explanations of which megastructures were one, were just one. Andrew Simeon, leader of Breakthrough Listen science team at the University of California, Berkeley's SETI Research Center, said that the teams uh, said in the same statement, follow-up observations have suggested that dust particles in orbit around the star are responsible for the dimming but studies of abnormalities like this are expanding our knowledge of astrophysics as well as casting wider net in the search for techno signatures Sema, uh, oh, said, added what talking about a lot of dust today yep dust all we are is dust in the wind breakthrough initiative Oof. <laughs> Breakthrough Initiatives was found in 2015 by billionaire tech investor Yuri Milner to inv investigate life in the universe. Other Breakthrough Initiative projects, including Breakthrough Watch, which aims to study nearby rocky exoplanets, and Breakthrough Starshot, which is developing technology to explore alien worlds up close. All right, Daddy, we're uh, we're done with the space stuff now. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. I um, to talk about your thing. Yeah, I've been kind of quiet because I've been not Mr. To, like, Hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kind of quiet this whole time because I've been trying to like formulate how I want to like go into it and all that. But yeah, okay, I'm good. Um, so uh, I'm gonna get into some Twitter drama, and I don't mean like. Oh, me and some rando on Twitter got into a beef. Well, no, I mean, I'm pissed at Twitter, and here's why. Um, so, for context, there's a video that was posted. Um, 
Why did I close it? Oh my god. That feel when you're not professional at all. Um, so, here's this. <clears throat> if you guys want to pull that up or whatever. Um, um, well. Oh, did Grimshi just fucking step away? I believe so. Ah, you dick. So, yeah. Baby, come back. Let's segue into Addy's thing without getting any of Addy's shit up on the screen. All right, uh, want to talk about something not... else? I'm <laughs> back. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Can I just say, how hard is it to put, um, not put lettuce on tacos? Uh, it's pretty hard. I find myself compelled to just go into random people's houses and sprinkle a little lettuce on the tacos. Oh, you got uh, lettuce on the taco. What? Yeah. Rimshi, I, fuck I off! Find, I always find when taco night is, and uh, I sneak into people's houses with bags of lettuce. <laughs> anyway. Well, apparently they screwed up my tacos twice. And that's why it took so long. Hmm. Oh. Uh, we were so, reading the words. Uh, well, to, to be fair, it's Taco Bell. They're just trying to rush it out. Losing oh yeah, when we when me and Miss Rimshi went there recently, uh, the dude literally was like, "Here's your drink, here's your food, get the fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, he didn't say that, but it was fairly <clears throat> obvious by the fact that he didn't say anything. <laughs> Very heavily implied. There's a bucket of sauces over there. Try to find the ones you want. Oh, we were through the drive-through, <laughs> so. <laughs> It wasn't even. <laughs> it was like I don't give a fuck if you want sauce. Yep. So um. Yeah, Rimshi. Uh, and I need your help because you're on the control deck here. Um, I'm trying to set up the context for what I'm going to talk about. I'm hesitant to put that up because I I realized what's in it. And do we really want to display that on Twitch for longer than I already have? What do you mean? What's uh? It, what what's in the image? L the language in the image. Oh, you don't have to play the audio or anything. I just wanted people to see the. Oh no, he's ta he's talking about the image right now. Addy also posted a video. Oh, okay, I guess. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to get my point across without the images, though, so. <sighs> uh, right. I posted a link in the chat. Posted... Yep. So, to save the channel, just take a quick quick peek at that. Yeah, that anyway. About earlier. So, yeah, there's this video going around of um, some... Young teenagers, they claim that they're like 16 or so. I have no information other than that. Um, they're 16 or so, and they're hanging out at this all-ages play park, like swinging on swings and hanging out. And this insane woman walks up and starts telling them they have to leave because they're too old and using all kinds of like mean language and swearing at them and all kinds of crazy stuff and um i don't know if that's the whole story because the camera starts rolling literally as she comes walking over which is a little suspicious to me and who knows what the full story is anyway because exactly i mean th these things can be but, so deceptively edited yeah, yeah 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 but my point is my point is we don't have all the information. We don't know if she was instigated. We don't know if if these kids were doing some inappropriate stuff and then it just set this lady off. I don't know. I don't care. The point is the lady ended up getting doxxed in the string of replies multiple times. And I repeated, um, uh, ugh, I reported it and... Twitter said they looked at it, which is, again, why 
you know, having the images up would help. Uh, Twitter said that they looked at it, um, and it got the okay. Like, a post that shows her personal phone number, her home phone number, uh, her place of work, her home address, her full name, her closest relation, um, you know, her place of employment and everything. Uh, that's just up with a post that says, if y'all want to have fun, here's this. That, to me, smacks of intent to harass. Yeah. And Twitter said it was all right. And I've been cam campaigning against this, I guess you could say, since last Thursday. Um, the post is still up. Twitter's completely ignored me. I've been posting angry tweets on their, uh, on their support page, their safety page. Um, you know, I've been tweeting at them relentlessly. Uh, I even went so far as to say the only way I know how to get your guys' attention is to say naughty words. So I said a bunch of naughty words in a tweet with a link to the doxing tweet and said, can you please fucking do your job? And I got a 12-hour tent ban, but the tweet is still up. By the way, uh, anyone watching this video on demand, if you want links to this, um, Addie's link number one is her her, uh, uh, her, her bot thing. And a uh, Addie's link number two is the video she's talking about. Yeah, I don't... I'm at my wit's end with it because I don't want to just like give up on it. And, like, I had one person respond to me and be like, why are you standing up for this woman? I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, yeah. I don't, like. <sighs> it doesn't matter who it was done to, what was done is wrong. You yeah, can just like, release people's personal yeah. information like that. Yeah, and it's also against Twitter's guidelines, and Twitter said it was okay. So. Yeah. Everybody should be held to the same standards when it comes to. Yeah. But we, we all know how that works with, oh, I don't know, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. The only web Pornhub is the only website that I've seen be consistent. Yeah. I see the picture that you're worried about putting on screen, Rimshi. I forgot that I posted the unedited tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, like, I've been... I've been going at this hard, and I've got nothing. So my first tweet, I'll just read the tweets then, I guess. Um, obviously, I'll censor what needs to be censored. But um, my first tweet was, hey, at Twitter safety, at Twitter, at Twitter support. I fucking reported some scum fuck for doxing someone with clear intent to harass, and the tweet is still up three fucking days later, and now with a retweet. But how fast will you respond to me saying the R word? Fuck yourselves. Um, so then I post a picture... Of the uh, tweet that I made, full of naughty, not Twitter friendly words. Um, no, it's a F word, R word, N word, D word, W word, C w word, C word, F word, the CW the plus word. word. Yeah, that. Ban me if you want, but do your fucking jobs, please. Uh, which was met instantly the second I hit send on that tweet. <coughs> We've temporarily <laughs> limited some of your account features. <laughs> yeah. So I posted a screenshot of that uh, and, uh, and tweeted, so here I am after, after a 12-hour stint in Twitter jail for trying to get these useless cunts to do their jobs, and the fucking doxing tweet is still up. Y'all will ban a gay man for the F-bomb, but some woman's personal information is perfectly acceptable. Nice. Um, I just say, I've been looking at these responses and um replies to these tweets and god it's bad yeah the 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 amount of times that i've seen people respond to that video saying y'all should jump her and there's a bunch of people saying we should go to the park this weekend and jump her it's like this is a clear threat to this woman and twitter is just ignoring it It's just <laughs> surprise, surprise, double standards. Yeah. So I made a uh, t like I don't have a following 
really i've got like i think like 20 or 30 people that follow me on twitter and they're all you guys <laughs> so but i made a um i made a tweet in the thread that that says um if any of my followers are connected to anyone with reach please get this thread out there hold twitter accountable for allowing the flippant doxing of people on their platform it's been days over a week now since i made the report and the post is still there they refuse to listen to me you can blur my name out if you want. I don't give a fuck about notoriety or fame on the internet. Please just help me make Twitter do their fucking job. Yeah, of course The woman who is doxxed is kind of a bitch, but that's besides the point entirely. Of course you don't care about fame on the internet. You're part I, of this group. I don't take You're on this show. Internet, seriously. I do it not take makes no sense myself how seriously. This, this probably happened before. Hmm. Like doxing and all that. It's just why. I mean, we've oh, got <clears throat> we've got a precedent set that or uh, set that uh, doxing leads to swatting and swatting leads to deaths. So, I think this is fucking serious. Yeah. Especially when you've got a thread full of people saying, "Let's go and jump her." Do your job, people. Do your job before I do it for you. Hmm. We shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to do their jobs for them. Well, I can't. I, I can't do their job for them. I can't delete. Tweet. I can't get rid of it. Yeah, but we can delete Twitter. <laughs> delete the Twitter. Hmm. But yeah, that's basically all I've got on that. I've been waging this one man war for the last week. To absolutely no avail. I've gotten not a single response back from Twitter. Not a reply in any of the uh, tweets that I've made directly to them on their support pages. Nothing. All I got was, we've received your report, and if we have any further information, we will contact you. That's it. An automated response. Fuck them. Yeah, this is also... Uh... Well, let's get Twitter safety banned. Why not? Hmm. For ignoring obvious threats and refusing to report. Yeah, I just and you can't report it more than once. You know, like I thought, like maybe maybe my report got lost in a sea of reports. So I tried to report it again, and it gives you like a little like. Like messages that like we've received your report. You can't you can't report it more than once. Once they've made the decision, that's it. It's the same thing as just for shits and giggles, when they temp ban me for twelve hours, you have a little link to the appeal, which means nothing. You click the appeal button and it comes up and says, No, you did the thing we think you did, so you're just gonna have to wait. Which is fine. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't, I don't care if they permanently yeet me off the platform altogether. They've already done it once. I give a shit. I can live without Twitter. Yeah. But if I see something wrong and I have the power to do something about it, I want to do. Yeah, I, I get that. Hello? Did my internet just take a shit on me? Yeah.
Okay, sorry for the dead air. Hopefully this fixes itself soon. Um, this is just video on demand, which not many people uh, pay attention to anyway. Now if it'll finish connecting. And he's back. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck happened there? Hey. Okay, and we're back. Are we? Yeah, it, it should be running again. Okay. We should be back up and running. I don't know what happened. My router decided to die on me. Hmm. Mm. God. That is weird. Damn, he's stupid. There we go. <laughs> oh, the fucking power plug was not fully set in. Well, well yeah. we're back, people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And there's um, there's a probably about five minute uh, five minutes of dead air, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well, we'll fucking deal with it. But yeah, so... it, it'll still make it to the to the video on demand, so there will be dead air on the VOD. <laughs> yeah. So, Fuck it, I don't um, care. Yeah. In case you guys missed it, um, Jables asked me for the link. Uh, I'm kind of questioning. Don't. Questioning posting it to the chat because Don't. I. Don't I post believe... it in the chat because that could well, be seen as brigading. But if it gets spread around naturally, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want to post it because then I'm participating in the doxing of this woman. But I'm hoping that the people that I'm showing it to are going to report it and not act on it. I would imagine the people in this chat would, but if I do post it, then I've just helped dox this woman. So. Which is not catch right. twenty two. Yeah. However, which is a situation I would not be in had Twitter done their fucking job last Thursday. We already know Twitter's useless. Uh, no. hmm. You guys want to go to something more positive? More positive. No. We don't have anything more positive up next. <laughs> well, I don't know. Can we go to the... Let's, the uh... Let's, uh... Oh, wait, no, we do have something... Uh, something fun. I count it, I count it as po Yeah, I count it as positive, because I, I just like seeing this dude back. Yeah. All right, let's... let's... Let's jump into it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Um, Are you? Edward Snowden searched the CIA's network for proof that aliens exist. Here's what he found. <laughs> Nothing. PSA for all the Area 51 stormers, chemtrail believers, and climate change deniers. Edward Snowden has searched the depths of the U.S. intelligence network and can report the conspiracy theories are not true. As a former employee of the CIA and contractor for the National Security Agency, Snowden had access to some of the nation's most closely held secrets. And, like any curious mind with access to the CIA's version of Google might do, he went in search of answers to some of society's most pressing questions. As it turns out, the U.S. government is not aware of any intelligent extraterrestrial life, he says. For the record, as far as I can tell, aliens have never contacted Earth. Or at least, they haven't contacted U.S. intelligence. Which, the intelligence agencies, that's kind of an oxymoron. Snowden writes in his recent memoir, Permanent Record. Which, 
uh he he was on joe rogan's podcast recently it was fucking great i jables let me know about it and i i ended up listening to it today holy crap that guy just it it's one of the few times where you don't hear joe talk a hell of a lot because he's just engrossed yeah link <laughs> look it was actually really good when i i he's edward snowden is a really good order like, yeah he's, he can speak really well i he had my attention the entire time I was at work and I found myself paying more attention to that than I was at my work at times. Luckily, what I was doing was kind of brainless anyway. (laughs) Really concise, too. Like, doesn't end up repeating himself a whole lot. If he does, it's to go into a deeper explanation about a question that Joe asked. Yeah. It's to provide more context when context was not included originally. Yeah. <sighs> also, the moon landing did indeed occur. <laughs> In case you were wondering, yes, man really did land on the moon. Climate change is real. Chemtrails are not a thing, he adds. NSA, the NSA yeah, whistleblower, I... what? I, I just really enjoy how he had access to these files and he's like, I'm going to sift through this. I'm curious if these uh, conspiracies are real. <laughs> well, I mean, it all started out with him finding finding some stuff that wasn't supposed to exist. Yeah, by pure accident. Pure accident. So he started sifting to find... Because he had access to everything. What else he saw? Dem cheeks. God, you know what? If he saw Hillary Clinton's nudes, then I'd say time served for whatever he did. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) You know what? He did not mention the Kennedy assassination. You know, I was just thinking the same thing. I was not. Yeah. Sir brought it up. Joe, get back in contact with him. Find that shit out. <laughs> the NSA whistleblower added that cons- uh, added or addressed the conspiracies again on an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, released Wednesday, saying there's no evidence of aliens and chemtrails and the like. I know, Joe. I know you want there to be aliens, Snowden joked to Rogan, the podcast host. I know Neil deGrasse Tyson badly wants there to be aliens. And there probably are, right? But the idea that we're hiding them? If we're hiding them, I had ridiculous access to the networks of the NSA, the CIA, the military, all these groups. I couldn't find anything, he continued. So, if it's hidden, and it could be hidden, it's hidden really damn well, even from people who are on the inside. (sighs) To be fair, the man revealed a massive program of surveillance run by the U.S. government and is now living in exile in Moscow Moscow as a result. If the U.S. government was keeping secrets about aliens and UFOs in Area 51, surely Snowden would have been uh, the one to find out. So why are people on the internet so keen to believe in conspiracy theories? That's the question Snowden Snowden does have the answer to. Everybody wants to believe in conspiracy theories because it helps life make sense, he said on the podcast. It helps us believe that somebody's in control, that somebody is calling the shots. I tell you what, that that episode was really good. Yeah. But uh, I, I just want him to be able to come home and have a fair and open trial. Yeah, Open. he he gets into that. Yeah, he does yeah. in the, the which. I he, mean, he he goes into how his how his trial would work, and it's fucked. Yeah, it's unconstitutional. As fuck. Government's too powerful. We we need to reduce its control. Seventeen seventy six rise again. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's that that joke. That meme government. is starting to sound more and more realistic. I'm joking, Gary, my FBI agent. Just joking. <laughs> I'm not, John. We co we cover news, but I, you know, it, we like to joke about things. But seriously, 1776 will rise again. Did you know it's illegal to say? Never mind. Oh, we're not doing we're not doing that the whitest kids you know joke. <laughs> <laughs> but Rimshi, no, no, we're not joke no, stealers on this show. Fun. Yep, <laughs> just using it as a reference. I wasn't going to go into the full bit. Not this time. <laughs> Semper <Simple> Tyrannus. <time. laughs> Okay, God. that's too far. Um, Fuck. Yep. Let's talk a little Anyways. bit. Let, let, let's go from one group uh, of uh, authoritarian fucks. Because we, we kind of moved on to, to the government at the end of that. But yeah, let's go Eddie, from one group one? of authoritarian fucks to another. Uh... Yeah, sure. I haven't really talked much this episode. Might as well. Oh, that's a lie. You talked for a whole 15 minutes. Okay, I guess I'll just shut up then. <laughs> no, you <laughs> should absolutely read it. I think, you'll li I think you'll like this article. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh... Hesitant hitman jailed over botched assassination in China. <laughs> a group of hitmen have been jailed after repeatedly trying to subcontract a job to each other in <laughs> Grand <laughs> Grand <laughs> China. They keep fucking, they fucking hiring each other to do the job. They kept trying to. <laughs> okay. Businessman uh, uh, Ken Yuhui hired a hitman to take out his competitor for $282,000, a court heard. But the hitman hired a man to do the job, hired hired another man to do the job, offering 141000 That man hired another hitman who hired another hitman who hired another hitman. The plan crumbled when the final hitman met the man, named only as Wei, in a cafe and proposed faking his death. All six men... The five hitmen in ten were convicted of attempted murder by the court in Nanning, Guangxi, following a trial that lasted three years. Sounds I, like they're just lazy. I need room to breathe. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking Laurel Hardy and Skip. Like, 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 that is... Oh my god. This is one of those truth is stranger than fiction moments. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So not What happened? <clears throat> um The saga hey, of the subcontracted hitman dates back to a professional dispute in 2013 when Mr. Wei took legal action against Tan's firm, the Nanning Intermediate People's Court said on its website. Scared of losing money fighting a lengthy court case, Tan contacted hitman Shi Guanggan and offered him two million. Why are they saying this in all yeah. these different? It was pounds yeah. up there. Now it's yen down here. Two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars to kill Mister Wei. She accepted the job, but shortly afterwards asked another hitman, Mo, Mo Ten Shang, to kill Mister Wei instead, offering him one mil again with the yen. One million. After Mo. <laughs> One million. Uh, yeah, no, um, it's that they're changing. Um, they keep changing. $1, yeah, yeah, they're doing dollars, then yen, then pounds. Make up your fucking mind. Anyway, after Mo accepted, she renegotiated with Tan to be paid another one million yen after the killing. <laughs> and random bullet pointed links that look like they're part of the article. <laughs> um. Uh, but Mo in turn contacted another man, Yang Kang Sheng, who agreed to carry out the killing for an upfront fee of 270,000 yen, with another 500,000 yen to be paid afterwards. 
They yeah, keep offering yeah. the next one like twenty five percent of what they're supposed to be getting. Yeah, <laughs> all, all um, at most fifty percent. <laughs> I want to see that like the last guy proposed faking to death because he didn't want to go to prison for murder over like twelve grand. <laughs> uh, Yang Kang Shen then offered another hitman, Yang Guang Shen, two hundred thousand yen to assassinate Mister Wei. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> also with a bonus of 500,000 yen after completion. Finally, the chain came to an end when Yang Guangshan offered a fifth hitman, Ling Shangxi, uh, 100,000 yen to kill Mr. Wei. <clears throat> That's like 10,000 bucks. Oh, uh, hey, Mickey Figgy, thanks for the sub. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yay! Um, instead of carrying out the murder, Ling, Ling met up with Mr. Wei in a cafe, told him there was a hit on him, and proposed a plan that the two of them faked the murder. Mr. Wei agreed to pose, gagged and bound, for a photo that Ling, Ling could take back to Yang Guangshen before later reporting the case to the police. <laughs> the case initially went to trial in 2016, but the six defendants were acquitted due to a lack of evidence. Are you kidding me, <laughs> Oh, that way to bury the lead, BBC. That is a, <laughs> that's an even bigger bungle than the entire case. <laughs> Prosecutors appealed against the decision, and the second trial lasted three years. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Tan, who hired the the original hitman, was sentenced to five years in prison, while she, the first hitman, was sentenced to three years and six months. Yang Kangshen and Yang Guangshen were sentenced to three years and three months. Mo was sentenced to three years, and Ling was sentenced to two years and seven months. And then it just ends. It seems All like right. their sentences corresponded to how much money they were supposed to get to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel You're like... You're less guilty because you would have made less bank on this. You know, I feel like you should get more time the less money you would get paid to kill someone because it means that you're more willing to do it. Like no, it, it's gonna take. It's gonna require at least this much for me to take this guy's life. Jeez. Well, I don't know, cause you have to build up a reputation as a hitman uh, in the first place. So being charging a certain amount means that you have a certain level of expertise. That's fair, but I mean, it, it's just one of those things where, yeah, no, I'm willing to take a man's life for almost. I'll I'll, I'll take a man's life for a handy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I bet there are some oh. crack uh, crack whores out there that would do that. Hey, Thanks Yemi. Videos, Mickey. Woo! Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, no, you have a reputation under a fake name. That's the key. You know, it's like, hey, this guy's this guy blah 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 is a really good hit. Man. You don't build it under your real name. No, you build it under a name that is kind of <coughs> a whole dollar. Hmm. Angelic Nightmare. Thank you for the the follow. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you 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 don't even really do it under a, a separate name. You just come up with a with a code phrase or something like, "It's the Black Widow. The Black oh, Widow is hosting? killing people." It's John Wick. Turns out the man. Black Widow is some fat guy who, who who's just really good with uh, with tasers, <laughs> and, and well, for some reason right. likes to likes makeup and, and kissing their victim with lipstick on. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a fat guy that's really good at uh, catfishing on Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly because of the three women he's got chained up in his basement. Hmm. Yeah. Because he's not a basement dweller. He's a hitman. He has enough money to afford an entire house. But he still just stays in the basement. Hmm. No, no. He, he models his living room after a basement. He keeps the ladies that he's got chained up in the basement. He builds a house out of cinder blocks, so it looks like a basement. I get it. Yep. 
Uh, and there's <laughs> there's special inserts for the windows so that it blocks all the light, but you have the legally required windows. Yes. Uh, and he sounds something like this. I've got. Oh, damn, is he good at killing? I've got a number of questions. <laughs> I have a number of questions for you, Rimshi. Why don't you have a seat? I I'm sitting down. Oh. Okay. I don't. I also don't have a basement, so. A likely story. If there's a <laughs> Wish I had a basement. Count. I'd be set up down there right now. Hmm. Crawl spaces count. No, they don't. <sighs> under your house no, no that's not a that's not a basement it, a basement a is not just any space under the house a basement is more of a descriptor like a whole set of rooms underneath the house a room or a, or a set of rooms yeah yeah a crawl space is a crawl space it's yeah, a descriptor that, a crawl space is specifically for running pipe electrical wire uh Air ducts, that sort of stuff. Housing possums. Hiding the bodies. You don't store live people in a crawl space. I mean, you could. <laughs> you could, but you, you don't. Depends how long you need to store them. That's a... And how well they're gagged and tied up. Because a basement will... will Metaphorically. A basement will hide a lot more of the sound that comes out of them... Uh, as opposed to a crawl space, which they could crawl over to one of the vents that's required to be there and start screaming for help. And suddenly you've got the cops around your place and you're having to run and change your name and you can no longer go by Paul. It's a hassle, trust me. Yeah, I know, Paul. It's been a bitch. I'm not Paul anymore. I mean, I'm not Paul. <laughs> Okay. You know the worst part about that is that was actually completely accidental. I'm I'm thinking yeah. as I'm saying, it, I'll just say any more as a joke. No, that's that's going to be too obvious and it slips right out. <laughs> By the way, you're welcome for the fake ID. What fake ID? <laughs> exactly. I think you mailed it to me. Hmm. Uh anyways, Speaking of things dying, <laughs> you had to yeah. <laughs> what a transition! <laughs> a hunter was gored by the deer he thought he shot and killed. Wow. Yeah. Nature's Revenge of the back. druids. <clears throat> this brings—they're coming right for us. Uh, make a lot more sense. An experienced Arkansas hunter was found severely injured in the woods Tuesday night. His body riddled with antler puncture wounds. He later died. The 66-year-old man from Yellville had shot a deer and made plans with his nephew to field dress the deer's body together, police told CNN. When his nephew found him, the hunter was alert and talking and was even able to call his wife, but he stopped breathing by the time the paramedics could get him to the hospital. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission said. Officials are not certain that the antler wounds are the official cause of death, the commission said in a statement. He may have died from other medical issues such as a heart attack. Yeah, uh, the statement said, but there will be no there will be no autopsy. Okay, that's a little sketchy. Hmm. Hmm. He no was an autopsy? idiot, and we don't want to drag it out. That's what it sounds like to me. The deer yeah. won this round. Injuries resulting from wounded deer are not uncommon, said Joe Dale Purdom from the Game and Fish Commission. On occasion, hunters may approach a deer thinking it's dead when it's only stunned or injured. Usually they jump up and run away, sometimes injuring a hunter in the process, Purdom told CNN. But this is the first time he has seen a hunter die after approaching a stun deer. Purdom said it is generally good hunting practice to wait 15 to 30 minutes before approaching a shot deer to make sure it is dead. The victim, who had lived in Yellville 
for more than 20 years was an experienced hunter, so Purdom said he doubted that his injuries were a result of poor hunting practice. Instead, he said it seems to have been in an unusual accident. The wounded buck has not been found, Purdom said. The killer okay. is still on the loose. <laughs> yep. hmm. We got to find him before he starts coming for us again. I kind of feel bad about that, though. Like, the dude was trying to have, like, a bonding moment with yeah. his nephew or whatever. He ended up getting gored by a fucking deer. You got to remember, too, I'm from New York, where we view them as fucking pests. They destroy your property and they trash your fucking car. I hate them. I hate deer. So I'm 100% not on the side of the deer in this story. This sounds like a freak act. Assuming that's what happened, that there will not be an autopsy part is kind of fucking sketchy to me. But um, yeah. assuming that it was this event that led to his death, um, I actually feel bad for the guy. Yeah. Here, let oh, me go yeah. check if no. I have deer behind my backyard because i live near the woods if you do shoot yeah, don't don't get me wrong i'm pro hunting i'm or not anti-hunting i'm just lazy <laughs> uh yeah that's a weird way to phrase that Rimshi, did you just sub yeah of course i did i subbed with uh with twitch prime so you know Free money. <laughs> Addy subbed with Twitch Prime. Did I? I don't remember. We've got like, what, three Twitch Prime subscribers? Yeah, whatever. I used my Prime the other day to switch to, to sub to Nick, though. Oh. Sorry, I don't like us enough. Yeah, I don't like us enough either. That's fine. It is what it is. <sighs> Addy. What's up? You might like this one too. <clears throat> so, Just who's... Saying. Uh, are you gonna read it? Me? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh. You... Yeah. 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 No, yeah. honestly, honestly, I think I'll pass. My voice is kind of giving me a hard time right now. All right, I'll take uh, it. Right. Sorry. A man kept getting drunk without using alcohol. It turns <laughs> out his gut brews its own booze. Yeah. Why couldn't this have happened to me? Or me. <laughs> you know, I, it makes me wonder, what was it like for him as a kid? Did he get arrested all the time? No. I, I don't know. We'll, know. F we'll read and find out. A man with auto brewery syndrome would become drunk after eating carbs. For six long Why does years, a man would sleepy, experience mysterious bouts of drunkenness without ever After drinking a, couple a drop of, of alcohol. Or a glass or two of wine, Eventually, you might find he was yourself feeling a little tired. But then a few hours later, just as you're trying to fall asleep, the 46 -year -old you're wide awake, maybe even a little jittery. Syndrome, Why does alcohol a condition first that make you causes sleepy bacteria and then in alert? The, gut to transform the answer to that is complicated, but it can be partly explained by alcohol's powerful effect on the central nervous system. Alcohol enters the bloodstream quickly, usually within 20 minutes. Minutes. And as molecules easily cross the blood brain barrier to affect the brain cells, up when people once in the brain, sugar, alcohol targets sugary certain or carb heavy neurons foods that transmit and chemical messages. And throws them alcohol into bonds a to those receptors and restricts the flow of chloride ions, the slowing the neurons Dr. firing Rote. and triggering feelings of relaxation. Okay, so this guy just has to go on a keto but about diet, and then when he wants to drink, just munch on some bread. Hey, Rimshi. <laughs> yeah. The, the video was playing over you when you were talking. That's fine, I paused it. The man was unable no, sir, to... Sir said the video is playing over you. That's... Yeah. No the much. man was unable to function, and it was mainly after meals. Dr. Fahi... Uh, Fahad Malik, co-author of the report, told the Today Show. 
The man's symptoms emerged after he received antibiotics in 2011 following a complicated traumatic thumb injury. Wait, I, are you saying if I take a hammer to my thumb, I can get... No, no, it had to do with the antibiotics. Jables, no! Oh, Jables. He, he'll do it, too. That's the scary part. He's going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, God. The report says... Don't do it! <laughs> Jables, you don't have the condition. You're just going to go to the hospital and have a bad time. Yeah, it wasn't the hammer that gave it to him. It was the antibiotics. The man was unable to function, and it was... Oh, I already said that. Uh, the report said, The well, medication I need, oh, likely... I need that thumb injury so I can get those antibiotics. No, you don't. No, just get VD. The medication likely dis uh, disrupted his gut micro microbiome or the community of microorganisms, such as bacteria and fungi, living there. No one believed him when the man said he didn't drink, Malik said. The patient experienced a brain fog, displayed uncharacteristically aggressive behavior, and was even arrested for drunk driving. On that occasion, the man's blood alcohol concentration registered at twice the legal limit, but he insisted he hadn't been drinking. The hospital personnel and police didn't buy it, the report noted. God, that fucking sucks. Following his arrest, the man's aunt came across a case report describing a patient in Ohio who was treated for a similar condition. She and the man traveled to Ohio Clinic where doctors searched the man's poop for boozy microbes. They uncovered strains of... I'm going to say the two... Uh, the, the two microbes. Otherwise known as brewer's yeast. In the stool samples... At this point, they suspected the man had auto brewery syndrome, but asked him to chow down on some carbs to make sure. Eight hours later, the, ma hey, the man's... get drunk. Yeah. Get drunk <laughs> off these carbs, please. Eight hours later, the man's blood alcohol concentration spiked to more than .05, close to the legal blood alcohol limit for driving, confirming his unusual diagnosis. Despite receiving antifungal treatment and being placed on a no-carb diet, the man still experienced flare-ups. He saw in, uh, uh, internists, psychiatrists, neurologists, and gastroenterologists in attempts to get his spa uh, spontaneous drunkenness under control. I think someone might be at my door, so if someone could finish that up. Uh, yeah. During this time, one extreme ep episode left the man with a dangerous head injury and a potentially fatal blood alcohol concentration of 0.4%. Whew. Hmm. This honestly Here, too, the medical staff refused to believe that he did not drink alcohol despite his persistent denials, the report said. Then the man sought help at Richmond University Medical Center in Staten Island, New York, where doctors placed him on antibiotics and monitored him closely for about two months. The therapy successfully rid the patient's gut of the boozy microbes, though. At one point, the man ate pizza and drank soda while on his treatment, resulting in a severe autobrewery syndrome relapse, the report said. The patient was then prescribed probiotics to promote the growth of helpful gut bacteria. Slowly, the man was able to incorporate carbs back into his diet. Boo. A year and a half later, the man could enjoy a slice of pizza without fear of intoxication or potential alcohol-induced liver damage. Yeah, that last part's the only part that would bother me. I don't want liver, yeah, damage. liver damage. How the fuck would you live your life? This sounds like it sucks. Like, yeah, I'm like... like I don't want to be like a killjoy, and I was like, "Well, it would be awesome to get drunk for free all the time." No, it, this sounds like your whole life would be fucking ruined. How the fuck yeah. did you hold a job, drive to work? Like, if you accidentally, like, like, like you're not thinking right, and like someone like me, where my job is to drive all over 
the tri-state area. Literally, I go from here to Connecticut to Jersey and back again. Um, I'm on the road like 12, 13 hours a day sometimes. Imagine pulling into like a gas station and be like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get a shitty slice of gas station pizza or whatever. And you're stuck two states away from home while you're on the fucking clock because you're trashed in the parking lot off a slice of pizza. No, you've got eight but, hours well, to drive you, before you, you're trashed. <laughs> yeah, it, ta- it takes it takes a while to kick in for one thing because it's uh, it it gets tri- it gets changed still, into the booze, and then you end up digesting it. But it changes first as you're initially digesting it, as opposed to a liquid, which goes through your system a lot faster. Just still, have a high carb meal. On in the another morning. point, just <laughs> don't eat carbs. No, fuck that. Until the evening. All like, the most delicious things are carbs. Fuck off. I know, but you save them for the e- you save them for afterwards. Steak is not carbs. This this fucking sounds like a shitty life, and I'm glad I don't live it. <laughs> oh my god. What if someone had this type of thing and went to a buffet and not know? Yeah, like that's They'll the thing. Be it's dead like in hours. Maybe. Yeah, like maybe you. Yeah, like, if it's my fine. fucking birthday and people give me, like, a cake and there's pizza and shit, and I pick out, and then later that night I, I fucking die of, like, fatal alcohol syndrome. You know, like, what the fuck? I... No. This sucks. This is a shitty condition. I don't see any positive uh, in it. It'd be fun in the short term. That's for sure. Yeah. I I think I'd be totally fine. I need to go on the keto diet anyways. Yeah. So Booze ain't that really expensive. You can issues. get you can well, get like a fucking half gallon of vodka at any liquor store for like eight dollars. Well, Miss Rimshi is, is not on expensive. the uh, the it's not the keto diet, but it's a variant of it called Code Red. Yeah. Um, it, it's basically the same thing except you have a lot more um vegetables, and you cut down on actual fruit. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you cut down on salad. fruit on keto. Yeah, you cut down on fruit on keto, but uh, you you you're restricted to berries, and you you eat a lot more vegetables because despite the carbs, it, it's the fiber you want. And mm. there are a few other things that you do differently, like uh, you reduce your cheese intake and stuff like that. Uh, it worked. Can, it, it's worked can, really well for her. Yeah, on the uh, on on keto, you can generally just have a shit ton of cheese. Doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Eat a stick of butter, mon- munch on some cheese. Uh, yeah, no. Fry up a steak, cut that up, make a cheese sauce, um, dip it in the cheese sauce. Fuck it, keto. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need to get I I need to get some uh, pork rinds or something. Because, uh, because I want to make, oh, I want to make right. mozzarella sticks, but you, but you got to do those breaded. So if you, uh, switch out the breading for, uh, for like pork rinds or something along those lines, it, it's still keto. It's still code red, but no, uh... well, okay. No, it's not code red cause cheese, but it's still keto. And, uh, it, it's, it's mozzarella sticks. So, um, <clears throat> are we raiding or what? <laughs> uh, has he started his thing? Yep. Okay. All right, yeah. Um, before we do, we got one more article to do. Yes, uh, since Halloween's coming up. Yep. Okay. Children of recently divorced goth couple excited for first year with two Halloweens. Danvers, Massachusetts. Local siblings Lisa and Danielle Burke will uh, get to experience their first year with two different Halloween celebrations following the divorce of their goth parents months ago. Jealous sources report. This time of year, it's so much fun. Once I see the leaves on the trees start dying, I know it's almost time to decorate the yard with skulls, carve pumpkins, and cast spells on classmates I don't like, said eight-year-old Danielle. I can't imagine how much better it's going to be with two Halloween dinners, trick-or-treating in two different neighborhoods, and two animal sacrifices to <laughs> Baphomet. This Baphomet. is the Baphomet. Whatever. It's not a real thing, anyway. 
It matters to me. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> Ethel Burke, the children's mother, stressed that even though they're no longer married, she and her husband, Nightshade, are still a team for their children and want to provide for them as much as possible. As Night goth shade. parents, obviously we want nothing more than for our children to be sullen. And the recently divorced goth who admitted... Uh, admitted she can't listen anymore to the spooky sounds cassette tape her husband bought her on their first Halloween together. But it has to be the right kind of miserable. There's nothing theoretical about your children asking you why dad isn't coming trick-or-treating with you. I want them to evoke a sense of despair in everyone they encounter, but I don't want them to actually be miserable. I hope that makes sense. What the fuck? 14 year old divorce expert Julie Toombs, uh, who st uh, started counseling children on divorce following her own parents' separation when she was five, hopes to temper the young girl's excitement ahead of their first double Halloween. In my work with children of divorce, I try to help them mitigate their expectations. The middle schooler said, sure, they're probably going to get more candy and watch your parents compete for your affection can be fun at first, but they shouldn't think of it as having two celebrations. There's one celebration and one sad evening where you learn too many things way too young about trying to date in your 40s. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm sure they'll have fun with their mother going to the normal spots in the neighborhood that they give out full-size candy bars, to, uh, Tombs added. But it won't be as enlightening as knocking on doors at their father's new apartment building trying to not puke from all the cigarette smoke. In fact, the youth, uh, the, the, the young goth children's excitement over two Halloweens has quickly challenged, uh, was quickly challenged when realizing this also meant two separate Thanksgiving dinners. Hmm. Well. Anyways. Thanksgiving um, dinners will be in comas. Yeah. I've done that. I've done a family run of Thanksgiving dinners. It, it's, it's fucky. You gotta split them by a week. Um, anyways. Yes, I'm With ready that, to raid. We've been your lesser saints of Discord. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everybody that uh, subscribed and followed. Uh, <laughs> Mickey Dicky, thanks for the biddies. Um, yeah, raiding, raiding Nick right now. We're we're doing the thing. Oh the, yeah, the, the, the thing is happening. Join us next Friday, 4:30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Damn it! <laughs> Bye. Bye.